Well, to discuss this, I'm joined now from Washington by Middle East analyst Matthew Brodsky. He's also a senior fellow at the Security Studies Group. Also with us is Gerard Witstadt. He is an attorney formerly with the U.S. Navy. And in Doha is Fadil Abdul Ghani. He's the chairman and founder of the Syrian Network for Human Rights. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on the Newsmakers. Fadil, let me begin with you. So Trump ordered the rapid withdrawal initially. Now he's slowing it down a little bit, but the U.S. is still leaving Syria. Is that the right move? Of course it's not. Uh, now President Trump abandoned the Syrian. And why? Be for several reasons, actually. First of all, let's us go back to their reason, actually, why they implemented in Syria. Th let's go to their goal. First goal, defeated ISIS, eliminate Iranian militia, or remove Iran from Syria. F third one, th those are the main three ones. The influence in order to make effect in the political process. Those are the three main points. But if we go one by one, none of those have been uh, accomplishment. Uh, first of all, ISIS still exists in Syria. They still control huge uh, territory in the Tudmor desert. Uh, the, uh, the second one, uh, the Iranian militia now will, uh, they are so happy, the Iranian regime, they're going to expand in this area more and more and seize more territories and area. The third one, where is your influence now in the Syria political process. Now, this uh, quarter of Syria make you uh, have a huge influence in the uh, political process. So okay. none of those, their main three goals. If I, if you give me one, one more second, why also they cannot leave li like this? Because they have implementation toward the victims which they have been targeted through their air forces. The international coalition, which led by the U.S. forces, killed about 2,832 Syrian citizens, including uh, children and, and women. So that you need to make reparation okay, for those but Fadil, victims. Isn't it, isn't it an argument also, to say that if you've killed, if you've killed almost 3,000 Syrian citizens, pulling out is a good thing because you're going to be killing far fewer of those if you stay out of it? Nevertheless. Let me go to Gerard, and I'll come back to you in a moment, Fadil. Gerard, Fadil is making an argument from, an, from a Syrian opposition perspective. I know Fadil. Fadil wants a democratic and free Syria. He's anti-Bashar al-Assad, and he wants the United States to help. And he's saying, you're abandoning us. So, Gerard, what's up with the president? Well, I don't think we are abandoning the Kurds in Syria. We have 5,000... Besides, I mean, besides the Kurds, Gerard, besides the Kurds, besides those that would fold into Kurdish groups. You have somebody from among the Syrian opposition saying, America, if you're going to be involved in Syria, stay the course and make sure you leave when things are a little bit better. It seems to be a cut and run, according to Fadel. So, Gerard, come in. Well, you have to understand that the election here in the States two years ago, our president ran on a platform saying that he was going to withdraw troops from the Middle East. So he is, he is making good on a promise that he made to the American people. And frankly, we're sorry if that causes um, more problems over there, but we've got nearly 8,000 Americans dead and $4.9 trillion of American money spent over there for nothing. Nobody understands what's going on in Syria right now. There is fighting between all types of different groups. And nobody is getting anywhere, unfortunately. And I think, frankly, the American people are tired of putting its lifeblood and its money into a situation that is just not getting okay. any better. So, Matthew Brodsky, in the absence of a clear policy and in the absence of a clear understanding of what to do, isn't it better to just leave? Well, the fact is the president apparently doesn't have any idea what is happening with American policy. But the Syria team that he uh, put in power uh, in order to run affairs in Syria certainly has an idea of what the objectives are. Uh, it was laid out uh, by one of your previous guests. Of course, the enduring defeat of ISIS has not been achieved. Uh, Militarily, we have an uh, authorization for the use of force that only applies to ISIS, um, which, of course, is now considered an extension of al-Qaeda as far as the U.S. is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, however, 
in the political process, we really have uh, a, a our presence uh, plays a role in pushing back on Iran. Uh, so part of the plan has really been to establish American leverage, having had uh, none from right. what this president uh, was inheriting from uh, from Obama. And now we've had a political process and an economic process, which basically is to make sure that reconstruction funds does not go in to bolster Assad and Russia and Iran. All of that now will disappear as people rush to invest but, in but, Assad. But Matthew, Assad, 30 percent of the allow territory. Allow me to come in for a second here. Matthew, right. Assad already controls about two thirds of the country. He has retaken a lot of the country. The Russians are undoubtedly there. The Iranians are undoubtedly, undoubtedly there. Do you want America to, to clash head on with all three of these groups while they stay in Syria? Surely you don't. They're not clashing head on. What they have is, as you say, 30 percent of the territory, northeastern Syria, which is over 90 percent of the hydrocarbons that are available. That's something that Assad and Russia and Iran were counting on for some of them to avoid sanctions and others for our reconstruction efforts. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of the resources that are under the United States feet. Turkey, of course, itself holds some 10 percent uh, within the Idlib province. Now, if the United States were uh, Con to continue working toward the goal it would have, mm -hmm. it would then be able to pump reconstruction money working with Turkey into that 40 percent of Syria and keep working with its European allies. Okay. By being able to do this, this was incidentally putting pressure on the Constitutional uh, Committee in order to convene one in the first place to make sure that there were people that would be representative so that there would be a Syrian future that would transition away from Assad, which was another U.S. objective that President Trump is apparently just walking away from because he had some December 14th phone call with President Erdogan. Right. Okay. And so, Gerard, it's not just Matthew and Fado that are unhappy with this. It seems there's a direct correlation between the resignation of James Mattis and this decision by President Trump to leave Syria. Let's have a little look at a couple lines from, from his resignation letter. I find this to be pretty interesting. The former U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis in his resignation letter saying, because you have the right to have a Secretary of Defense whose views are better aligned with yours on these and other subjects, I believe it is right for me to step down from my position. Gerard, when we look at that, put, put Daesh or ISIS aside, Mattis is known to be big on Iran. He wants to stem the, what he believes, the imperial agenda of the Iranians in the region. And he believes, it seems, that what Trump is doing is basically handing the, the Middle East to the Iranians and their allies on, on a platter. Gerard, is that fair? It might be fair, but you have to understand, General Mattis is a patriot. And he understands the constitutional authority of President Trump. President Trump is the commander-in-chief he makes the decision with regard to the Department of Defense. If the, sec if the, if the Secretary of Defense does not um, agree with him, he should step down, and he sure. rightfully did. But doesn't it he make you worry that Mattis and McGurk are saying the president's not listening to us, so we're just going to get out of this because it's pointless us being here. We're the experts, and the guy doesn't want to listen to us. Yeah, sure. So, again, is such a complicated situation, and anyone who really claims to be an expert in Syria is probably not an expert. I certainly don't claim to be one. It's too complicated of a situation. Look, we've got, we've had, we have had. I can answer your question if you need someone to directly answer your question. Ma Matthew, excuse me, I was. Okay, finish your point, Gerard, and Matthew can come in. So again, Syria is a very comp complicated situation. There is no one, I believe, who has an expertise in that area. There are too many active involvements in there and too many different uh, push it, pushes and in, in plays in Syria right now. So if President Trump makes a decision to pull our, Syri our troops out of Syria, then the, then the Secretary of State must abide by that. That's the way our, 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 um, our system works in the United okay, States. Okay, that's and how the that's system works. Okay, Ma Ma Matthew, come in. The fact that Mattis and McGurk said, okay, that's it, we're out, we're not going to be a part of this, what does that say about the plan or lack thereof, and basically, what does it say about the policy? 
Well, clearly, uh, they had disagreements with President Trump. The rumor around Washington for a long time had been that after the midterm elections, uh, Mattis was either going to step down or Trump was going to replace him. McGurk was going to be retiring uh, in February. McGurk is the head of the, uh, of the anti-ISIS plan that was put in place under the Obama administration. Uh, he was actually, that policy was, of course, about uh, America's strategic realignment toward Iran and away from our traditional allies. Why Brett McKirk was actually still kept when President Trump said he was coming to Washington to drain the swamp, he would have been pretty high on the list that most uh, Republicans would have said he's someone that would need to go. Now, both of these people, having it been assumed that they were going to leave, what President Trump did with his snap decision was to make martyrs out of them. It allowed Mattis to then mm -hmm. say, I'm now leaving because of this. Brett McKirk, you know, just pushed up the date that he was leaving by two months. And all the media coverage says, as you're asking, that they decided to leave because of Syria. Certainly, this was a last straw. But these are two people that were on the way out. And Trump did simply made martyrs out of them, which isn't good for him. OK, Fadl Abdelhani. Looking at the former U.S. ambassador to Syria, Robert Ford, would you, would you consider him, Fadil, a friend to the Syrian people? Actually, I disagree uh, f uh, from what um, Ambassador Ford that, uh, have been written. In because he said he agrees with newspaper. Trump. Yeah. I'm totally... He, yeah. He, yeah. Yeah, he just, he just defied the Trump, actually, decision. And, uh, and why Syria now became complicated, or not now? Uh, let's remember that Russian intervention happened, take place in September 2015. Uh, what actually the Syria is complicated and mess because the U.S. in action in Syria, they didn't take, they didn't lead the process in Syria, and they they have actually wonderful chance, and they miss it uh, to re to remove this killer, which is used the red uh, repeated broke the red line by using the chemical weapons against his people. They have wonderful opportunity in Obama administration, and now in Trump, and we uh, have little bit optimistic when the Trump because he's a Republican, he gonna to change uh, like Obama process, but unfortunately now. He is, uh, he is removing his uh, troops from, from Syria without leading Syria to, uh, to, 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 uh, to democracy. In, uh, and, and, I, and we believe that if he did that, he will going to have this, uh, this uh, wonderful view again, that he's removing, uh, like, dictatorship, wo hundred wars are the, the, than Saddam Hussein. Uh, Bashar al-Assad committed, like, la like thousands of crimes against humanity, against his on people, including using the right. chemical weapons. But Fadil, the goal he, uh, from Trump will get the U.S. The, goal like, was the, never to... The European support and... The, uh, 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 Over the past few years, the U.S. goal was never yeah. to remove Assad, right? So even if the U.S. was staying, it was never stated that the U.S. was going to see it through until Assad falls. So why, why is it an issue that At, Assad is definitely confirmed as staying because the U.S. is leaving? No, what they are trying to do, like uh, eliminate the Assad power and the Iranian in order to reach to the political process uh, agreement. But that's, uh, that's also uh, the U.S. didn't spend much, actually. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, aside uh, supporting the BYD, what is the, the U.S. strategy in Syria? Mm -hmm. and, and we believe that, and I spoke that several times. In, in the White House, at the State Department, through my visit, repeated visit to the New York and to the D.C., that they, they, they make terrible mistake by supporting minority inside Syria. And now they are, they, they are moving without even solving this terrible pr problem in the mm -hmm. uh, west of Syria. Right. Uh, in, uh, because now you need, you need to uh, make this area stable. Uh, and establish political uh, political leadership in in this area by uh, by ma by make joint uh, like administration from right. the court, okay, and from the local themselves as well. But now you are you you leave without even doing this very minor issue. Now uh, the weapons will stay with the PYD. The, this that's that what we are hearing, right. and we 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 are believing that th that a lot of a uh, battle will, will take place in, in, in those areas between Fadil, Arab me, and, and courts in order uh, af after, after the U.S. Uh, let, let me ask you something very directly related to Turkey's role here. Do you accept and understand the Turkish perspective that, yes, 
while the U.S. is arming and funding the SDF forces, which includes the PYD or YPG, and they were integral over the years in the battle against Daesh or ISIS, that on the other side of this coin, they are a sister organization to the PKK, and those weapons will be turned on Turkish citizens and NATO ally, and that's why Turkey found it unacceptable, and that's why Turkey might be breathing a sigh of relief that the U.S. is no longer going to be supporting the PYD or YPG on the ground. Do you accept that Turkish position, Fadl, as somebody who's in the Syrian opposition? I said that uh, very uh, obvious and frankly to the, uh, to, to the American. I said we have, like other uh, experience uh, in Al Forat Shield, and uh, uh, despite uh, the maybe minor mistake, but it's become much more better than only support minority inside the society. That will lead for long civil civil war. Of course, the the Turk uh, like experience is 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 much better because they are relying on the society, diverse society. We need to include the Kurds. Of course, they are part, but the, the, the population of Kurds, it's part from the Syrian population. And we are not actually make any discrimination between Kurds or, or Arab. We, we need a uh, de democratic company. If the president become Kurds or Arab or, or any sect that acceptable for us, we have only one condition, to love his country, to love his, his people. But of course, the, the Turks e experience by Al Forat Shield and by, by others is, is better than the PYD. And the PYD doesn't hidden actually their link to the B BKK. All uh, of the media remember the huge photos of Ojalan right. in Arraqa, and that's not accept not acceptable for us. Okay. If ISIS like put uh, Al Baghdadi Al Baghdadi photos, that that's are right. similar actually, and okay. the BYD does not represent Al Kurd at all, same as ISIS does not represent uh, the uh, Islam. M Matthew, as we're running out of time. I want to ask you whether you agree with the fears of Senator Lindsey Graham, who said he hopes that what Trump has done with Syria is not what Obama did with Iraq, essentially to leave a vacuum which only creates more chaos, more disaster, and worse terror groups than we could ever imagine. Is that what's going to happen? Do you fear that? Uh, if the withdrawal uh, continues apace, whether it's 100 days or 120 days, it'll actually be far worse than what Obama did. See, when Obama pulled out American troops from Iraq in 2011, this was some time when analysts like me had to point out to a threat that was not entirely there yet. There was al-Qaeda in Iraq, but ISIS did not exist. So we had to say, if you do this, these type of uh, scenarios might occur. When the president announced the U.S. withdrawal, we were actively engaged with our Kurdish allies fighting that day against ISIS. There were some two to 300 U.S. strikes against ISIS targets within Syria in just the previous week. And that was announced by the commanders uh, in, of Operation Inherit Resolve a few hours before the president's tweet. So right now, we know what the threat is. But additionally, we know for a fact the way Iran is going to uh, benefit from this in terms of land corridors and creating more bases from which to attack Israel or Jordan. And we know what the threat is to the future of Syria, because it trades all of America's leverage. It's really too bad President Trump decided not to say, hey, I've been able to do something that no other president has done before. I did the Goldilocks policy. I chose the correct American policy with the right amount, a small American footprint, had Kurds do most of the fighting on the ground, and was able to create a lot of U.S. leverage and work toward American goals without having to tinker with the politically impossible authorization for military force. This would be really sellable if the president understood it and decided to use that approach instead. Okay. Well, it's certainly not Goldilocks, and there's certainly lots of questions about what will actually unfold in Syria. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm out of time. I have to move on. Matthew, Gerard, and Fadil, thanks for joining us.